The steamer J.M. White is a side-wheel packet steamboat built in 1878. The steamer was owned by Greenville and New Orleans Packet Company and was named for Captain J.M. White of Cloverport, Kentucky. At a cost of over $103,000, she rivaled anything ever built before her for the inland rivers. Post-Civil War steamboats were known for their luxurious passenger accommodations and the J.M. White did not disappoint. Her spacious main cabin was quite large at 19 feet wide and featured impressive 13-foot ceilings. The design was not based on any particular architectural design, but representations of all manner of period elegance. The paneling of the cabin was unique in that it had veneered sunken panels in the bulkheads of richly polished rosewood and walnut burl. There were seven 16-burner gold gilt chandeliers in the main cabin designed expressly for the vessel by the Cornelius and Company of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Her sad end came on the 13th of December, 1886, at Blue Store Landing, St. Maurice Plantation in Point Coupe Parish, Louisiana, while she was laid up due to lack of shipping. Several lives were lost as the large steamboat began to burn. Gunpowder stored in the hull let go in the blaze, hurling timbers into the air. The steamer James Howard is a side-wheel packet steamboat built in 1870. Captain B. Rush Pegram ordered this vessel to be built for the St. Louis New Orleans trade in 1870 and kept the name of the vessel secret until she was ready to sail. Captain James Howard was not only the owner of the shipyard that built the vessel, but regarded in the industry as the finest builder on the waters. Mr. Pegram wanted to use this vessel as a testimony to the fine vessels built for him by his friend Captain Howard and ordered the vessel to be one of the river's true queens. Few exceeded her length, abilities, amenities, and none exceeded her quality. She was shown for public inspection on the 21st of January, 1871, and hosted an amazing 45,000 guests. Very popular with the public, she transported the Grand Duke Alexis of Russia and his entourage to New Orleans in 1872 to attend the Mardi Gras. Although she would catch fire in her hold on the 9th of September, 1873, she was purposely sunk to her guards to extinguish it. Raised and restored, she continued to operate safely until 1881. Captain Pegram would sell her in 1878 to the Anchor Line. She retained her name in their service. On the 13th of March, 1881, at St. Louis, fate caught up with her and she would burn at the levee. She went down in the annals of river history as one of the greatest side-wheel packet boats to grace the inland rivers. The steamer Robert E. Lee II is a side-wheel packet steamboat built in 1876. Her construction was ordered by Captain John W. Cannon for the popular New Orleans-Vicksburg trade. Much of her equipment came from the former Robert E. Lee, which was dismantled by the Howards to utilize these parts in her construction. She was launched on the 25th of April, 1876, and completed at Portland, Kentucky and New Albany, Indiana. She was much more luxurious than her predecessor, the famed racer. This vessel featured quite a unique five-note steam whistle, which shows prominently in almost every extant picture of her. She entered her trade as a river packet steamer on the 15th of August, 1876, and ran continuously until the 16th of February, 1877, when she blew a cylinder head, killing one of the crew. It took over a month and $3,500 in repairs, but she returned to service on the 27th of March, 1877. She was a proud host as the royal yacht to bring King Rex to the Mardi Gras on several occasions. The South suffered immeasurably with the yellow fever in 1878. The result was a loss of business to the packet boat industry. Captain John W. Cannon was forced to lay the boat up. Painted, renovated, and ready to go, she came back out on the river ready to work again. Unfortunately, this would be a short-lived rebirth, as on the 30th of September, 1882, she would be downbound on the Mississippi at Yucatan Point, where she would succumb to fire. The steamer W.M. Gehrig is a sternwheel packet steamboat built in 1904. It was built for the Baton Rouge Bayou Sarah trade. 
She was sold in 1908 to the Carter brothers, who were in the New Orleans Camden trade on the Mississippi and Wachiquita rivers. She was sold to the Eagle Packet Company in 1917, who rebuilt her to become the Golden Eagle. In 1932, she was entered in the St. Louis Cape Girardeau commerce trade. This proved unpopular, and she was withdrawn six months later. This was the end of the packet business for the Eagle Packet Company. Wishing to build on the success of the Green Line and their tourist boat business, the Golden Eagle was renovated yet again, this time as a tourist boat. She proved quite popular traveling to St. Paul, Chattanooga, Nashville, Cincinnati, and ports in between. She was also in a rather unique race in 1939 against the Delta King and Queen. All three boats ran different routes of similar length. The little Goldie was the fastest on her run and won. On the 14th of June, 1941, she hit a submerged dike and was partially sunk at Chester, Illinois. She was raised when the river fell and continued running until her boilers were condemned in 1944. She was sold in 1946 to the Miller and Willers families who replaced the boilers and operated her that season. They in turn sold the boat in March of 1947 to Herman T. Pott in St. Louis. On her first trip of the 1947 season, downbound from St. Louis, she ran aground on Tower Island and sank, a total loss. The steamer City of Baton Rouge is a center wheel catamaran ferry boat built in 1916. Owned by Baton Rouge Transportation Company, she was used as a ferry boat in Baton Rouge from 1916 through 1969 when she was retired. She operated this trade with the steamer Louisiana, also a Howard-built vessel, that was converted to twin-prop diesel when the city of Baton Rouge was retired. Retirement didn't last long as the city of Baton Rouge would move to Dubuque, Iowa in the fall of 1969 to be a big part of the rebirth of steam navigation on America's inland rivers. She would give her engines, pilot wheel, and many other mechanical parts to the new steamer Julia Bell Swain in the summer of 1970. She became the wharf boat for the Julia Bell Swain at Peoria, Illinois in 1971. She was the office, kitchen, storage facility, and part-time home for the crew of the little steamboat. In 1980, Peoria was hit by a tornado. The city of Baton Rouge took a direct hit, and the pilot house was knocked off the boat. She stars in the 1981 PBS movie adaptation of the Mark Twain classic, Life on the Mississippi. All the cabin scenes for this film were filmed in her cabin. Although never replaced, the rest of the boat survives to this day. Almost a hundred years after her birth, this Howard-built boat soldiers on as a testament to the quality and longevity of the legend of the Howard Shipyard.